The Earth is in trouble. The environmental movement has finally convinced everyone, or almost everyone, that global warming is real. I've been an environmentalist for 20 years, and I believe that this accelerating global climate change is one of the biggest problems our society faces. We need better energy sources that don't pollute the environment. Recently, a few environmentalists have been arguing for more nuclear power because it doesn't produce greenhouse gases. Nuclear power has been controversial for a long time, but it's worth revisiting that controversy, especially now that some people are beginning to see nuclear power as a solution to the environmental crisis. The United States produces more carbon dioxide than any other country, except for China, which has recently overtaken us. Greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide and methane, are emitted by industry, agriculture, and the cars we drive. But the biggest source is the electricity generation that powers our homes and businesses. The United States gets most of its electricity from burning coal and natural gas. This is a natural gas facility owned by a utility company in Boston. Just on the other side of the freeway is a turbine that generates electricity from wind energy. According to a recent poll done by MIT, people are wildly enthusiastic about wind power and solar power. But if the pollster tells them that wind and solar are more expensive, that enthusiasm dies away. Our global capitalist economy is built on consumerism. Other countries produce material goods and in the United States, we buy those products cheaply, then throw them away so we can make room for more products. We're used to buying cheap energy, too. The cost of all this energy consumption is global warming. Rising sea levels, disruption of agriculture, displacement of animals and people, acidification of the oceans, and more extreme weather events. Can nuclear power play a part in diminishing global climate change? I went to talk to an energy expert at MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts. He's one of the authors of a study called The Future of Nuclear Power. We're not taking a position for or against nuclear power. Uh, we are not predicting uh, a large or small deployment of nuclear power. We are simply asking the question, what would it take, what would it take to enable that uh, that is to enable nuclear power to be a marketplace player at sufficient scale to make a difference in mitigating climate risk. The Future of Nuclear Power study recommends limiting greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide, to keep them within a doubling of pre-industrial levels. It would be much better to be below that in the eyes of most, uh, but uh, doubling is kind of the outer limits. If nuclear power output was tripled globally, it could provide about a tenth of the carbon mitigation necessary, which is a significant amount. So, the study's recommendation is to keep nuclear power as an option if it can be majorly expanded. In the end, we believe uh, that uh, we emphasize it's about options and the marketplace ultimately making the decisions. In the United States, nuclear power currently provides about 20% of our electric power generation. Nuclear fission is an incredible technology that captures energy from the fundamental forces of the universe. In a nuclear reactor, when an atom of uranium is hit with a neutron, the uranium atom is split, releasing energy and other neutrons, which can go into more collisions, producing a chain reaction. The energy heats up water, and the steam is then used to drive a turbine and make electricity. This process also creates dangerous radioactivity, but it is that massive release of energy that makes it so tempting as a power source. New England is home to several nuclear power plants. I wanted to know more about the motivations of the people here who have been actively opposing nuclear power for many years. I've been uncomfortable having the nuclear plant in our town. I was uncomfortable before, and after 9-11 when George Bush said that that the terrorists were looking for the biggest bang for their buck and they were actually thinking about nuclear plants um, really starts to make you wonder. And, and now when planes fly over and, you know, every once in a while a DC-3 or something will come in kind of low and 
heading towards the nuclear plant. Even my little daughter, uh, I have a twin daughters, 13 years old, and and one of them, you know, always tells me, Dad, you see that airplane? It's flying towards a nuclear plant, you know? And I try not to instill any kind of fear in them, but I, they, they hear me talking and they know what's going on. Um, this land has been in a family since 1697, as far back as we could, could tell. The estuary is on the, on the uh, inner harbor there. And it's where the pilgrims came around in 1620 and, and um, liked it because of the protection of this spit of land. So. Uh, the nuclear plant's in this direction over here, and that stack that you see sticking up over the, over the, the hill is where the uh, gases come out of the nuclear plant. I have all my eggs in one basket. I've got, you know, some beautiful stuff in Plymouth that's all sentimental value. Uh, I've got, you know, stuff that's gone back for hundreds of years, and I just don't think it's right that somebody can come into town like that and buy our town out and, and uh, do the things that they're doing without being accountable. For their actions. The Energy Corporation owns the Pilgrim Nuclear Station in Plymouth, Massachusetts, 40 miles south of Boston. You can just barely catch a glimpse of the plant when driving by, and the signs on the road say you're not allowed to stop. Let me see. I moved here in 1986. Thought it would be a wonderful place to bring up the two youngest children. Uh, you have a beautiful beach, you have a beautiful bay. I looked across the bay and said, gee, what's that brick building over there? And someone said to me, oh, that's the Pilgrim Nuclear Power Station. So I spoke to my husband, I said, what? There's a nuclear reactor? I thought we were moving down to a nice, clean, healthy environment. Chernobyl, hello. He said, hey, don't worry about it. He went to MIT and he said, hey, there's a reactor at MIT in Boston. There are reactors all over the place. There's never been an accident. Don't worry about it. According to um, analysis done for the Massachusetts Attorney General's office, it could result in over $480 billion of damage from a spent fuel pool accident from Pilgrim and would result in over 20,000 immediate cancers. It would take out New England, in other words. The Seabrook Station nuclear power plant is located in Seabrook, New Hampshire, 40 miles north of Boston. You can see the plant pretty well from across a coastal marsh. Currently, the majority owner is the Florida Power and Light Company. During the 1970s and 80s, Seabrook Station faced community opposition and thousands were arrested during nonviolent demonstrations by the Clamshell Alliance, one of whose founding members was Chris Nord. The nuclear industry is expert and continues to enhance its expertise in the manufacture of consent. They've been working on it for half a century. They're really, really good at it. They continue to do it. So the general public, not knowing to pay much more than superficial attention to this, thinks first, you know, atomic energy is too cheap to meter. I mean, that was the first spin that came off. What they were doing was they were producing uh, enough weapons grade material to continue atomic weapons research, but it was sold to the American public in the 1950s as being very cheap and very clean. In spite of that, uh, if you look underneath the surface, there's this whole growing body of information that is factual, that is scientific, that tells an entirely different story. I moved into New Hampshire in 1972 as a conscientious objector during the Vietnam War. I grew up on the coast down in New Jersey and uh, loved the ocean and uh, loved sailing and loved being on the shore and just did not want to see this area turn into another sacrifice zone. And I did everything in my power that I could in the 1980s to try to stop that. And uh, unfortunately, the, the, uh, the plant was, uh, was, was put online in any case, in spite of not only my efforts, but the efforts of thousands of people like me who were working tirelessly to, to try to prevent it. If these activists are so opposed to nuclear power, why does the mainstream scientific world continue to endorse it? 
That perspective is well represented by the MIT graduate students who are studying nuclear science and preparing to work in the United States nuclear industry. Nuclear energy is a very well developed and very successful technology and can provide massive amounts of carbon dioxide free electricity generation. Nuclear power can be distinguished from generating electricity by burning fossil fuels. 200 million electron volts from splitting one uranium atom as opposed to a few electron volts for essentially turning a piece of carbon into carbon dioxide. I mean, that's, that's a very large difference in power density. And this is actually reflected here, uh, where you can see this uranium pellet, which is actually smaller than the size of my finger just for comparison, is equivalent to three barrels of oil, one ton of coal, or 17,000 cubic foot of natural gas. I was lucky to have a chance to visit the nuclear reactor at MIT. Although it doesn't generate electricity, it irradiates silicon for the production of semiconductors, creates isotopes for medical imaging, and is used for research on treating brain cancer. This is the control room for the uh, MIT research reactor, and we monitor everything that is going on in the facility. Uh, kind of the way it's arranged is the stuff that is really the most mission critical is immediately in front. And then as you go around here, uh, it's, it's less and less critical to look at it all the time. But every single uh, parameter within this room, we check over once every 30 minutes. This tells us exactly what the radiation levels are at kind of all of the main points of interest throughout the facility. And this is the top of the reactor itself. Tyler Ellis emphasizes that the United States has had only one major nuclear accident at Three Mile Island in Pennsylvania in 1979. In the entire 50-year history, we've only had one serious accident, and that did not injure anybody, did not result in radiation exposures to any personnel, and it proved the defense and depth theory that American engineers designed nuclear reactors by. So uh, in my opinion, the safety record is uh, one of the most positive points for the entire nuclear industry. Of course, the meltdown of the Chernobyl reactor in Russia in 1986 was a much worse disaster that killed many of the workers at the plant and spread radioactive fallout over huge areas of Europe. If you really think about it, Three Mile Island and Chernobyl were the best things that ever happened to the nuclear industry because they really changed everyone's perspective, made them look at themselves, how can we make this industry better? People are generally afraid of nuclear power. They associate nuclear power with nuclear weapons. Uh, they're totally different technologies. It's controlled in a very different way. Obviously, a nuclear weapon, the idea is not to control it. You want it to be as uncontrolled as possible. Um, nuclear power plants, by design, are built very safely, self-controlling. How did I become a nuclear engineer? I really was 18 year, years old. I didn't really know what I wanted to do, or I didn't really know that much about energy policy. I was generally concerned about the environment. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't think that the idea of burning coal and just shooting up the waste into the air was a good idea. Obviously, to think, well, nuclear power is an alternative where you can burn the uranium, the nuclear fuel, that can be done in an environmentally friendly way. This is a, a good industry. I knew I wanted to go into engineering, but yeah, maybe I want to focus on nuclear engineering. Supporting this actually feels good. Yeah, you have to feel like you're, you're doing something productive for society. There's something more than just yourself. 